Hello uh, and welcome to uh, the first lecture of uh, a new module which is elastic behavior of multidirectional laminate and uh, already we have uh, covered macro and micro mechanics of lamina. So, today we are going to start a new module that is the macro mechanical analysis of laminate. So, to start with let us first understand what is a laminate. If you remember uh, in our earlier discussions while uh, describing fiber reinforced polymer matrix composites, we have uh, simply defined some of the important terminologies like lamina, laminates there we have defined what is a laminate. So, let us again uh, reiterate a laminate is uh, formed by stacking uh, several uh, unidirectional lamina okay, bonded together to act as a structural element. Okay. You can see in this figure that maybe there are four lamina which are actually stacked together. So, this is this is lamina 1, this is lamina 2, this is 3, this is 4. So, they are stacked together and uh, to form a laminate okay. and they are perfectly bonded so that actually they can act as one unit. Okay. Now, uh, if you remember we, 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 we discussed that a lamina is thin and therefore, to provide a moderate thickness we have uh, stacked them together to form a laminate, okay. but we will discuss in details uh, why a laminate is actually required. Okay. Let us try to understand that in our micro and macro mechanics we have actually studied uh, in details in macro mechanics of lamina what we have studied is we studied the stress strain behavior of a lamina considering the lamina to be homogeneous that means we have represented a lamina by means of its average properties and then we also discussed in micro mechanics that how these average properties are actually obtained uh, as a function of uh, the properties of the constituents fiber and the matrix and the relative proportions namely the volume fraction. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, try to see that uh, we have seen that unlike isotropic material actually in orthotropic material uh, we can control the direction dependent properties by controlling some of the uh, important uh, variables like fibers that means the type of fiber type of matrix and for a given fiber matrix combination this could be controlled by changing the fiber orientation and fiber volume fraction. Okay. Uh, what does it actually mean? Uh, it means uh, suppose you have a lamina we have seen that uh, if we have a lamina suppose having 0 degree fiber orientation unidirectional lamina then if we subject it to load in suppose direction 1 this is 1 and this is 2 principal material direction then we have seen that E 1 which is the longitudinal Young's modulus is actually E f V f plus E m P m. Okay. Now, changing the fiber and the matrix we could actually change we could control E 1. Okay. Similarly, 1 by E 2 that means the transverse Young's modulus is equal to V f by E f plus V m by E m. So, and we also uh, understood that while these longitudinal properties are actually fiber dominated the transverse properties are actually matrix dominated. So, for a given uh, fiber matrix uh, combination changing the volume fraction will we can decide what should be the value of E 1 relative to E 2. Similarly, we can also decide what will be the ratio of the longitudinal Young's modulus uh, sorry longitudinal st uh, tensile strength to the transverse tensile strengths. These are all dependent on uh, fiber properties, matrix properties and the relative volume fraction. Therefore, uh, as we have discussed in one of the previous classes that one of the major advantage of this kind of composites is that we can tailor make the strength and stiffness requirements I mean design requirements of the strength and stiffness okay, according to our uh, requirement. So, like, therefore, this is an important point what we have learned from micro, ma macro mechanics and micro mechanics of a lamina. Okay. Then we have also seen that uh, the transverse properties of 
lamina of inner direction lamina are far inferior compared to the longitudinal properties. Say for example, if you consider uh, maybe a typical graphite epoxy suppose for a typical graphite epoxy laminate lamina unidirectional graphite epoxy lamina say for a typical unidirectional graphite epoxy lamina we know that u1 u1 is around 180 gigapascal and e2 is around 10 gigapascal similarly the longitudinal tensile strength is typically rough uh, i mean 1500 megapascal and the transverse tensile strength is only 40 megapascal therefore the transverse properties of uh, a of a unidirectional lamina are far inferior compared to the longitudinal properties both strength and stiffness the reason is while the longitudinal young's modulus and the longitudinal tensile strengths are actually decided by the fiber the transverse properties are actually uh, decided by the matrix and the fibers are very strong and stiff in the longitudinal direction thereby providing a very high values of uh, strength and stiffness in the longitudinal direction whereas the matrix uh, properties are inferior compared to that of the fiber and the transverse properties are decided by uh, guided by the matrix therefore influenced by the matrix therefore the transverse properties are much less and many times in in practical engineering problems they are not satisfactory that means this poor values of uh, this transverse properties actually does not uh, suffice many engineering uh, problems then uh, another factor which you have discussed earlier also lamina is very thin okay and uh, by itself it cannot uh, be uh, used to take a realistic load for example if you consider say again say the ultimate tensile uh, longitudinal tensile strength of a graphite epoxy lamina is 500 mega pascal okay that means if you have a lamina which is say 1 meter width okay and this sense and then say the thickness is small and the thickness is say thickness is say uh, say 0.1 mm then the maximum force it can take in the longitudinal direction is 1500 newton per millimeter square into uh, 0.1 mm into 10 to the power 3 that means 1500 into 10 to the power 2 that means uh, 150 kilo newton load per meter which is not sufficient okay for um, uh, many uh, practical problems okay this is another disadvantage okay uh, these two limitations mainly uh, that the poor transverse properties and the thickness of the lamina being very thin are actually overcome in a laminate by how by stacking several uh, lamina bonded together and then orienting the principal material uh, directions of the uh, constituent lamina to impart the desired directional properties against the complex strength and stiffness requirements okay and the stacking unidirectional uh, unidirection lamina lamina with different orientations uh, also increase the cost and weight so coming to this uh, how these uh, limitations are actually overcome say because the lamina is poor in the transverse direction so what we do is say for example suppose we want a laminate we, we want a component which is uh, strong equally strong suppose in both uh, the longitudinal and transverse direction so if we take a lamina if we take a lamina suppose we want this to be equally strong and stiff both in the longitudinal and transverse direction if we take a single lamina and apply load so it is stiffness in this direction is of course suppose it is a graphite epoxy 180 gigapascal however its stiffness in the direction 2 is only 10 gigapascal okay now suppose 
uh, and similarly the strength okay the strength in this direction is very high 1500 mega Pascal but in the other direction it is small as small as 40 mega Pascal. Now suppose what we do is because our strength and stiffness requirement is that it should be strong in both the directions suppose we just for an example if we take a 0 degree lamina and then we take a 90 degree lamina okay this is 0 this is 90 they are actually uh, bonded together perfectly bonded at the interface and they form a two layer laminate okay generally laminates will be uh, having much more i mean large number of layers just for just for the sake of example suppose you have a two layer laminate where one layer is 0 degree and the other layer is 90 degree fiber orientation then as a and they act as a single component then the stiffness in this direction and the stiffness in this direction will be was same okay provided they are having the same mat they are of the, the both the layers are of same material and same thickness okay so by just combining one 0 and 90 degree uh, uh, fiber orientation we could get a component which is equally stiff in both the directions okay similarly we could have com combinations of uh, different fiber orientation stacked together which will suffice the the complex strength and stiffness requirements so and then the uh, while stacking number of uh, uh, lamina together also provides a reasonable thickness which could be actually used as a uh, component in actual engineering applications unlike uh, a lamina which is very very thin okay however uh, the stacking of unidirectional lamina with different orientations is of course it increases the cost and of also the weight uh, and then so optimizing the stacking sequence is also a problem okay we, all, we would always like to minimize the weight and minimize the cost so stacking sequence optimization is actually another area where large number of work are being done okay so this is uh, in brief why a laminate is required we understood what is a laminate and why a laminate is required okay but please try to understand the basic uh, elements in a laminate is nothing but large number of lamina stacked together therefore understanding those lamina which we have already done in our micro and macro mechanics is very very important to understand the overall behavior of the laminate okay so the basic objectives of the macro mechanical analysis of laminate is that subjected to load this load could be axial load it could be uh, bending load it could be uh, shear load it could be torsional load or uh, i mean it may be in a purely mechanical or it may be combined hydrothermomechanical loading so under the load how a laminate actually responds okay so this is the basic objective and then uh, to find out the stress strains both in the global and local axis because until now unless we so when we try to find when we uh, only when we determine the stresses and strains we can apply the appropriate failure criterion to each lamina forming the laminate and take a decision whether the laminate is safe or not okay and then of course finally we would also like to see that how a laminate fails okay we should be in a position to assess the failure or safety of a laminate so this forms the basic objective of macro mechanical analysis of the laminate that means uh, the laminates are stacked together so you would like to know what is the stiffness of the laminate what is the strength of the laminate of course these are functions of the stiffness and strength of the constituent laminate okay then when this laminate is formed subjected to loading as already discussed that the loading could be transverse loading it could be axial loading okay it could be axial loading it could be torsional or shear loading and subjected to load or the end it could be uh, under thermal environment it could be a hydro thermomechanical okay environment uh, i mean hydro thermal environment and we would like to know what are the what is the response of the laminate response under load that is the objective okay subjected to load how it responds then 
for a given load for a given configuration of the laminate whether the laminate is uh, safe or unsafe. So, these are the basic questions we need to answer while uh, discussing the macro mechanical analysis of a laminate. Okay. Now, uh, you will uh, appreciate that because a laminate is actually made up of large number of lamina stacked together. Therefore, uh, when we try to find out the overall stiffness of the laminate or the strength of the laminate or the hydrothermal properties of the laminate, they are actually the strength, stiffness and other properties are actually is dependent on the corresponding strength, stiffness and properties of the constituent lamina. Okay. Okay. So, the strength, stiffness and hydrothermal properties of the of a laminate is actually dependent on the elastic moduli and strength of the constituent lamina. Then stacking sequence that means, when we say stacking sequence it is the material of each lamina, thickness of each lamina and the fiber orientation of each lamina. Okay. So, the strength and stiffness of the laminate is decided by the strength and stiffness of the each lamina and how they are stacked. Okay. Then of course, the coefficients of thermal and moisture expansion of each individual lamina. Therefore, since the lamina since the laminate behavior or the laminate properties which decides the behavior of the laminate is actually dependent on the uh, lamina properties. Therefore, it is important that we understand the macro mechanical and micro mechanical behavior of the lamina unidirectional lamina because only then we will be able to establish the behavior of a laminate under the under a given loading conditions. Okay. So, uh, before we actually I mean start uh, establishing the relation let us first understand some of the important designations uh, how a laminate is actually designated how a laminate is actually specified. Okay. So, there are standard way of designating a laminate. So, layup and stacking sequence. So, number of lamina are stacked together say for example, in this case 4 lamina one is 0 degree then 90 degree 45 degree minus 40 please note that what are these these are fiber orientation fiber orientation means with respect to the global axis or the analysis axis or the loading axis how the principal material directions are actually oriented. Okay. So, for example, if this is our x and this is our y. So, with respect to x y the first layer is 0 degree because it is 1 actually coincides with x and 2 coincides with y therefore, it is 0 degree. Similarly, for the layer uh, lamina 2 it is direction 1 actually coincides with y and direction 2 actually coincides with x therefore, it is rotated 90 degree similarly 45 degree minus 45 degree. Okay. So, a, a laminate is designated by writing this say in this case this is written as first 0 then 90 then plus 45 then minus 45 and enclosed in a third bracket. And when you write so without uh, only the uh, fiber orientation it means that they are of the same material and each layer is of same thickness. Say for example, in this case we will write that this is a graphite epoxy laminate having a stacking sequence 0 90 plus 45 minus 45. Sometimes this is also written as 0 90 the plus 45 minus 45 are combined to write as plus minus 45 degree. Okay. So, in this case the it is all the uh, lamina are made of same material and they are of same thickness. Okay. Each lamina or layer sometimes also called ply each ply of same thickness identical thickness. Okay. And the material is already specified here. Okay. Uh, many a times um, that uh, we may have a lamina, uh, a laminate which is say 0 plus 45 minus 45 90, 
and after that after that it's a mirror image okay then the same thing follows 90 minus 45 plus 45 0 okay these are actually written as we write half of this and then put a suffix s s actually stands for symmetric these are called symmetric laminate we will discuss the significance in details when we study the behavior of laminate symmetric laminate okay now uh, this uh, symmetric laminate means there is a with respect to the mid plane this is the mid plane of the laminate here okay so for example in this case this is the mid plane above this there are two layers below the mid plane there are two layers mid plane is the plane uh, which is equidistant from the top and bottom surface okay so above this there are two layers below this there are two layers but this is not symmetric this particular example it is not symmetric now we may have a laminate suppose 0 90 90 0 so with respect to mid plane thickness is same okay my diagram is not to scale but so we, with respect to this mid plane mid plane this is 0 90 symmetric okay so this means if we can expand this 0 90 then 90 0 so this is a symmetric laminate okay there are examples of these are all single material laminate all the layers here are say made of either glass epoxy or graphite epoxy say this is made of glass epoxy okay there are examples where the layers are from more than one material say for example in this case it is 0 degree glass glass epoxy 90 degree graphite epoxy symmetric so this is called hybrid laminate okay where more than one material is there i think we have defined in our uh, while just defining the terminologies hybrid laminate is uh, more than one material on the other end th these are called single material laminate so this hybrid laminate say for example this could be 0 90 graphite plus minus 45 glass so th there are three defined materials okay this also an, uh, and this could be symmetric so if you just expand this 0 Kevlar 92 graphite plus 45 glass minus 45 glass and then image mirror image of this minus 45 glass plus 45 glass then 92 graphite then 0 Kevlar. So, this is a full laminate which is a hybrid laminate many times this uh, say this has a requirement based on the requirement whether a laminate will be hybrid or not this, say many times suppose the outer layer is made with Kevlar if we are anticipating that uh, it Kevlar is good against uh, impact load therefore if we are anticipating that there may be impact it might encounter impact the component therefore we provide the outer layer as the Kevlar layer. So, this is a uh, standard designation of laminate make a note that layup and stacking sequence are different 0 90 45 and 0 45 90 their layup is same that means they are made of same three layers but their stacking sequence are different okay different stacking sequence okay so this is how the a standard uh, designation of laminate okay many times uh, even the thickness may be different so sometimes in some books you'll find that uh, laminates are actually designated like this say 0 maybe um, we write the thickness here okay uh, 0 say then 90 and then say 45 symmetric we give a pipe and write the thickness okay like 0 say 0 0.1 then 90 say 0 0.2 like this okay and in the suffix also we give the material suppose this is thickness are different as well as the uh, the materials are also different so we give this as suffix okay symmetric so this is in brief the uh, how the laminates are actually designated and specified and 
again uh, note that the stacking sequence is actually decided by decided by the uh, strength and stiffness requirement whether it will be 0 90 0 0 plus minus 45 90 0 it is decided by just we we had an example in, uh, in between I have shown you that uh, if we want uh, I mean uh, equal stiffness in both the directions we, we could do that using 0 90. Similarly, for many complex strength and uh, stiffness requirements we could actually decide the stacking sequence. Uh, now, uh, this knowledge of uh, macro mechanic analysis of lamina and micro mechanical analysis of lamina where we understood the stress strain behavior of unidirectional as well as the you know the unidirectional lamina when they are material axis coincide with the uh, loading axis which are called specially orthotropic or for angle lamina where the material axis are oriented differently with respect to analysis axis or global axis. We understood that both for specially orthotropic lamina as well as for uh, generally orthotropic lamina the stress strain relationship. Okay. And all this we also understood the failure theory, strength failure theories for such lamina. Okay. So, all these are actually combined all this information all this uh, understanding are actually combined to develop a establish a relationship establish the average stiffness or the response of a response of a laminate under loading in classical lamination theory. Okay. Now, in the laminate uh, we always assume that it is perfectly bonded okay. and uh, that means, if we consider two successive layers or lamina or ply they are perfectly bonded and the interface is infinitely thin. The interface is infinitely thin and not shear deformable meaning that these two layers cannot slip over each other. Okay. Suppose this is one layer this is another layer I am just exerting it will not be interface cannot be that and then this is this deforms then in that case what will happen this layer will slide over the bottom layer. Okay. So, this is very thin and this shear deformation is not allowed therefore, the, the, the layers cannot slip over each other. Okay. If the layers slip over each other means the, uh, the, the interface has failed okay. and the laminate cannot be uh, does not serve its purpose for which it will it is actually designed. Okay. And uh, also uh, you, you will know that we understand the behavior of lamina considering the plane state of stress okay, that the lamina are subjected to in plane load only. But a laminate when you talk about a laminate the laminate may be subjected to both in plane as well as transverse load. Meaning that there will be in plane stresses as well as bending stress because of the transverse load and they must be accounted for and what is done in a simple analysis is that that the strains because of the in plane strains suppose uh, the in plane stress strain is say the in plane strain is say epsilon naught which is constant over the thickness and suppose the bending strain okay, is say epsilon b. So, they are superposed you know that the bending strain varies like this depending upon the location of the neutral axis. So, they are superposed to get the total strain therefore, that is taken into account in laminate because a laminate may be subjected to both in plane as well as bending load. Okay. So, uh, now in classical lamination theory uh, in, in classical lamination theory before we actually go to classical lamination theory let us understand that how actually the laminate stress analysis could be done. See for example, suppose we take uh, uh, we take 
a say a 0 degree layer I am just exaggerating a lamina will not be that thick okay, and a 90 degree layer a 2 layer 2 lamina laminate. Okay. This is say x and this is say y and this is z. Okay. Now, this is the top layer is 0 degree and the bottom layer is 90 degree. Suppose they are subjected to a load along x, okay. then uh, the total load will be shared by the 0 and 90 degree and that will be proportional to their you know the stiffnesses okay. because they are perfectly bonded. Therefore, the strain along x of the top layer and the strain along x of the bottom layer must be same. This comes from the perfect bonding. Now, from Hooke's law, okay, if you talk about the top layer, uh, top layer sigma x t for the top layer E x is nothing but E 1 and for the bottom layer E x is nothing but E x is nothing but E 2. Therefore, sigma x t is equal to E 1 by E 2 sigma x b. This is the relationship between the uh, stress along x direction at the of the top and the bottom layer. Okay. Now, uh, because of this there will be transverse deformation okay. that means along, along y there will be transverse deformation along y. Okay. So, what is that uh, uh, deformation? So, now you can see that sigma y of the top is equal to sigma y the bottom okay uh, uh, sorry uh, the transverse deformation will be because of the poisson's effect okay so the so the transverse deformation along the y okay uh, of the top okay is equal to tau 1 uh, nu 1 2 into uh, sigma x top I mean epsilon x top okay. that is nothing but uh, okay. and that of the bottom is nothing but nu 2 1 epsilon x bottom. Okay. Therefore, we can write that the y strain strain along y for the top layer and the strain along y for the bottom layer is nothing but nu 1 2 by nu 2 1 because uh, sigma x t and sigma x b are same okay because uh, as sigma x t and sigma x b uh, sorry epsilon x t and epsilon x b are same. So, we can write this we know that the, the relationship between uh, nu 1 2 and nu 2 1 therefore, epsilon y t by epsilon y b is equal to nu 1 2 by e 1 is equal to nu 2 1. Uh, so, this is uh, we know that nu 1 2 by e 1 is equal to nu 2 1 by e 2. Therefore, uh, nu 1 2 is equal to e 1 by sorry therefore, nu 1 2 is equal to therefore, nu 1 2 is equal to uh, e 1 by e 2 into nu 2 1. Okay. So, therefore, this is equal to e 1 by e 2. Okay. So, uh, there is a difference in strains. Okay. Therefore, epsilon y t is nothing but e 1 by e 2 epsilon y b. Therefore, the strains are not same. Strains in the direction y are not same in the top and the bottom layer. What does it mean? They are perfectly bonded, but if the strains are not same, therefore, there will be stresses. Okay. This leads to the stress in the y direction. 
of the top layer and the stress in the y direction of the bottom layer. But the net force in the y direction is 0. Okay. Therefore, since f 2 is equal to 0, it implies sigma y t into uh, the area. Suppose this is say, suppose this is L say and the thickness is T, L into T plus sigma y b into L into T is equal to 0. So, which implies sigma y t is equal to minus sigma y b. Therefore, the stresses are induced in the top and the bottom layer. Okay. So, because of this stress there will be strains along x okay. and those strains again will not be equal that will lead to stresses and these stresses need to be added to the applied stresses. So, this keeps on continuing till we converge. So, you can, we can understand that for a 0 90 2 layer laminate, I mean it is important that equilibrium condition is maintained and the compatibility in the, in the, in the deformation is also maintained. Okay. And it is uh, just uh, then uh, if, we, if we consider a multi layer laminate having different orientations, uh, it will lead to a complete I mean uh, almost like an endless you know you keep on doing that. So, in classical lamination theory, therefore, we try to find out a simpler way of actually combining these equilibrium equations than uh, the compatibility of the laminate as a whole. So, we will discuss how the classical lamination theories are actually developed based on our macro mechanical analysis of the lamina and the micro mechanical analysis of lamina, lamina where we have actually uh, derived the property mac, macro mechanical properties of the lamina in terms of the constraint and properties of the fiber and the matrix. So, in classical lamination theory certain important assumptions have been made. Number 1 each layer is homogeneous and orthotropic that is understood. Okay. We have discussed a number of times in macro mechanical analysis of lamina. The lamina is considered to be homogeneous and orthotropic. Okay. The laminate is thin and uh, it is much larger compared to its lateral dimension. Suppose this is the laminate. and say this is h therefore h is less compared to a and b and is loaded uh, in the in plane that means the outer plane stresses are not there sigma z tau xz and tau yz are zero okay uh, all displacements are small suppose this is x component of displacement is say u y component of displacement is v and the z component of displacement is w then u v w are small compared to the thickness. Okay. Uh, displacements are continuous throughout the laminate. Okay. This is a continuum uh, assumption. Uh, in plane displacements vary along the thickness of the laminate that is are linear functions of z. Okay. That means u and v are linear function of z. Okay, we'll come back to this again in detailed discussion. Transverse shear strains gamma xz and gamma yz are negligible. Okay, so this, along with assumption five, leads to that the straight line perpendicular to the middle surface remain straight and perpendicular after deformation. What does it mean? Uh, suppose I take only this is, the, this is the plate, I take a section which is in the x z plane. Suppose this is x, so I take a section of this in the x z plane and after deformation it is like this. Suppose we take a section which is suppose this is the middle surface 
which is equidistant from the top and bottom surface. Suppose we take a line say AD which is perpendicular to the mid surface and straight initially it is straight. Now even after deformation the AD line A dash D dash will be straight and perpendicular to the middle surface. What does it mean? It means there is no shear strain. Suppose there is shear strain if we focus our attention here if there is had there been shear strain this would not have been a rectangle after deformation rather it would have been a parallelogram like this because the shear deformation and naturally then this would have been a okay, and then it would no more be perpendicular. Okay. That means what is this? This is nothing but x z shear strain gamma x z. Now, because gamma x z is equal to 0 therefore, this line remains straight. Okay. So, these two assumptions uh, tells us that similarly you can do for y z plane also similarly you can do for y z plane also gamma y z 0 means a straight line perpendicular to the mid surface before deformation remains straight and perpendicular to the mid surface after deformation. Then the strain displacement and stress strain relationships are linear okay. and uh, epsilon z is negligible compared to epsilon x and epsilon y. That means it is thin the laminate is thin. Okay. Now, I am uh, exerting this laminate is thin therefore, the stretch of this line A d after deformation is negligibly small compared to the thickness okay, and therefore, epsilon z is equal to 0. Okay. Based on these assumptions we would like to proceed to establish a relationship between the applied load and the corresponding displacement of the laminate. So, we will continue in the next class. Thank you.